Hi everyone, my name is Steph, this is Kidlit Joy and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I'm here to continue my series on the Children's Book Council of Australia or CBCA Book Awards for 2024. Today we are going to be talking about the books in the Eve Pownall section. Now the Eve Pownall Award is an award, and I'm just going to read the description from the website, that are books which have the prime intention of documenting factual material with consideration given to imaginative presentation, interpretation and variation of style. Books in this category can be written for readers from 0 to 18 years. There is always also a content warning on here that books in this category are for mature readers and some may deal with particularly challenging themes including violence and suicide. Parental guidance is recommended. Not all of the books in this category need those warnings but they are there so you can make informed decisions about what books you choose to pick up. All right so we are going to talk about the different books in this category. These ones I haven't really sorted into order of preference. I find particularly with non-fiction material I don't really have a preference. I do have one book in here that I have loved ever since I first read it and I'll talk about that one last. But everything else, it's kind of, these are just really incredibly interesting information texts that are available for readers. So the first one, and I have talked about this one before, I think, is This Book Thinks You're Deadly, A Celebration of Black Excellence by Corrie Tutt, with illustrations by Holly Hunt. Last year or a couple of years ago, Corrie Tutt had a book called The First Scientists that documented the history of First Nation science and the First Nation scientists. This book is very similar in that this one is exploring the brief biographies of really influential Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders who have had the impact on various fields within Australia. And so it's sorted into different categories. So you have music, film and television and stage, visual arts, literature, journalism, education, science, health and sport. And there's a section and then it has all of the people that we have biographies of. There is a bit of an introduction about the book and um, one of the the best things that I love is uh, there is a statement in here that says, so how do you fit 65,000 years of black excellence into a book? You can't, but it doesn't mean that we shouldn't try. And that's what this book does. So each biography features a really cool artwork done by Holly Hunt of the person that we are learning about, as well as a page of information about them. Again, just like The First Scientist, this is a really great one where you can just pull out one person to look at the text. The writing is great. The way that we learn about the individual is fantastic. The illustrations are really cool and it does talk about which indigenous land each person descends from, which I also really love. So this is a really, really great book and one that I keep dipping in and out of all the time. Tamara, A Story of Termites on Gurindji Country. This one is a collaboration between a lot of people. Violet Wadrill, Topsy Dodd, Nangul, Nangul, Leah Lehman, Cecilia Edwards, Cassandra Algie, Felicity Meekins, Bryony Barr, and Gregory Crocetti. Crocetti. And it looks at, quite literally, termites in Indigenous culture and how they are important to the land, what knowledge the Aboriginal community have about them, how termites impact on culture and ceremony. And it is so fascinating. Would I have thought to have picked up a book about termites? Probably not. But it is presented in such incredible ways. There's beautiful artwork, there are photos, there are facts. There is also information about the process of the book being put together, how they did the research, what they found, uh, the different languages that are included within the book, and also the creation of all the incredible artwork that makes up the book. Like it is collectively a really gorgeous book to look at, but it also has some really interesting information that I had never known about. So well worth checking this one out. Uh, then we'll keep going with some history kind of titles. There is Our Country Where History Happened by Mark Greenwood and Franet Lesac. And this one is kind of a timeline of the history of Australia. The end papers have a really excellent timeline that continues to the back. And then it's kind of told in two ways. So we have a narrative that kind of tracks the timeline, but then we also have information about this period in time and the and the different areas where we are. So it's a really interesting book and a great way to sort of recap some of the major milestones in Australia's history. And then there is also Country Town by Zold Martin and Robin Ridgway, and this one is illustrated by Louise Hogan. This one is also really interesting because it is set in the same town and it shows the progression of this town from the time where the indigenous population lived there through colonization and settlement. And it shows how towns have evolved in Australia throughout history. There is a, an author's note at the start that says, you know, which town is this? And it's not any particular town. 
it is a combination of how towns have evolved over time as I said before. So it's really interesting. It starts off with a poem from Robin Ridgway about 1822. And then each page we slowly begin to see the impact of colonization and settlers on the town. There is, this one is quite heavy on the text. And this is one of the books where you will have to um, consider the content warnings from the CBCA because it is very text heavy and there it's, it's a lot. There's a lot going on in here. But as you move through the book, you get different stages of how the town is built up. And this goes all the way from 1822 through the both world wars to current day. It is a really interesting book to explore and to consider the implications of pretty much everything that happens in here. Definitely not one for younger readers. The next book is Eel Gross, Foul Facts and Putrid Pictures. This one is by Dan Marshall and this is a non-fiction book that is obviously designed to grab the attention of kids because it is all about the gross things in life. So it is broken into categories like space, earth, humans, science, animals. And in each category, you will find some truly gross things that kids will find, probably find absolutely delightful because kids love things that are gross. So things like Volcanoes smell like rotten eggs. Young children's skulls have a full set of teeth. So this is a really, I mean, it's a really big book, but it's not one that is designed necessarily to be read cover to cover. It is designed to be dipped into when you want to. It is illustrated in a really fun way. It's put together in a really fun way that's supposed to be engaging for younger readers that makes you want to turn pages. Like you get the major facts for whatever your topic is on one double page. The visual elements in here are bright and colorful and it's definitely, you know, an eye-catching book. So I know plenty of children who this will appeal to. And then finally, there is Australia Country of Color by Jess Rackleyeft. And I have talked about this one before. I absolutely love this. I think it's a really gorgeous book. It looks at Australia's flora and fauna and it does so through the lens of color. There's a section on why color is so important within nature. And then we go through different color schemes. So red and pink, we get a bit of information about a place in Australia where that color combination is really prevalent and then you get flora and fauna that feature those colors and then you get information on those animals and that information is really bite-sized it's like little small chunks so this makes it a really perfect one for a younger audience because you can just pull out little sections and there are some really great examples of how you tell a fact in a really great way so it's great for sentence structure if you're teaching information texts so i love this one maybe because it's so colorful <laughs> i don't know but it is one of my favorite non-fiction children's books that i've read this year so those are all the books in the eve palinol section in the comments below i'd love to know if you have read any of them or if you're planning on picking any of them up or which ones would you like to pick up just from getting a bit of a sneak peek at them i'll leave links to where you can find out more information about the books and also this particular reward category down below. Otherwise, I hope that wherever you're on the world, you're staying safe and healthy and I will see you in my next video. Bye everyone.